Hi everybody. So if you've been watching my videos for the last few months, then you know that we were watching the World Cup because of these visions that I uploaded back in 2012 that came true this year and were associated with the World Cup event. And what ended up happening is the final match of the World Cup um, seems to be calling attention to the Pope. So you might already know this, but the World Cup final match was played between Germany and Argentina, which are the two countries that Pope Benedict and Pope Francis are from. So Pope Benedict is from Germany and Pope Francis is from Argentina. And apparently Pope Francis is a big fan of soccer. It says he was an avid supporter and former season ticket holder for the team in Buenos Aires where he was archbishop and apparently a lifelong fan. So his soccer team in Argentina just happened to make it to the finals this year, the first World Cup since he became Pope, and they just happened to be playing against Pope Benedict's home country. And the reason this is significant, among other things, is that we suspected that something significant would happen during this World Cup because of all these fulfillments of visions in 2012 that occurred in association with the World Cup. So if you're not familiar with all of this, um, the link is below to the playlist, Proof the Visions Come True and Watch Date Fulfillments. It's toward the end of that playlist. But since this recent event is calling attention to the Popes, I wanted to add a few more things to this list because you might remember last year on February 2nd, 2013, this video right here where we were discussing some watch dates and how there were several alignments calling attention to February 11th. Um, so we're add that to the list because we uploaded this video February 2nd, talking about the watch date February 11th. And then we also talked about what February 11th represented here in this video uploaded February 6th. And it was the second descent of Moses counting from the trumpets in 2012 when the when the revelation 12 sign happened and that reason re represented a revealing so and then on that date of revealing february 11th 2013 pope benedict ended up announcing that he would resign and on that same day of his announcement lightning struck saint peter's basilica so this is an article right here from the weather channel which shows the italian radar right here and this is an article from um, AccuWeather, a meteorologist examining the evidence that this lightning strike actually did hit the top of St. Peter's Dome because it was, it was hard to believe, you know, because it was just um, a little too coincidental that this lightning strike hit, you know, the top of the dome on the same day Pope Benedict announced his resignation. So a lot of people were doubting it. But this meteorologist looked into it and came to the conclusion that the photo of the lightning strike was legitimate. So it really did happen. And it happened, um, like I said, this this um, Weather Channel reported, it actually it happened on the day that he announced his resignation. So um, on one of our watch dates, right here, February 11th, Pope Benedict resigned and lightning struck St. Peter's Basilica on that same day. And then in that same month, on February 23rd, the Homeless Jesus sculpture was installed at the Jesuit School of Theology in Toronto. So right after this resignation, the Homeless Jesus sculpture found its first home at the Jesuit School. And then a few weeks later, Pope Francis was elected on March 13th. And Pope Francis is the first jesuit ever to be elected pope and then he ended up blessing the homeless jesus sculpture in november of 2013 so we'll add that as well um and you know the rest lightning struck the rio christ statue during our next major watch and then the christ statue was lit up during the next major watch after that which was the start of the world cup and then we also had the hot air balloon the, the and all the these other things that were shown in visions in 2012, including that homeless Jesus, um, that were all all seem to be calling attention to the World Cup. And then the final match of the World Cup ended up being played by the home teams of the two popes, which 
by the way, is also rare. I mean, the situation of having two popes, because the last time a pope resigned like that was all the way back in the year 1415. So it looks like there's a message in here. And a lot of it is also warning about a tsunami in the Atlantic Ocean. And so when Germany ended up playing in the, the World Cup final, I, I, it reminded me of this movie that someone else mentioned to me a few weeks ago. So thank you to that person who brought this up. It's this movie called Flushed Away. And I think it came out in 2006. And it's about this tsunami that occurs at the World Cup final. And the tsunami is perpetrated by this frog who plans to populate the city with his frog spawn. And the interesting thing about this is the World Cup final in the movie was being played by Germany and England. And that refers to the year 1966 when the World Cup final was played between West Germany and England. And so when I looked into the year 1966, I found some things that point to what the Bible says about the rise of the Antichrist. But um, I'm going to get into that in a later video because we don't have time to go into it now. Um, I just wanted to point that out, that this is all tied into this tsunami event everywhere, even in the Bible. But the most immediate thing that I noticed about these patterns of fulfillments was, like I said, the calling attention to the popes right down here and the Jesuit school and the fact that the Pope we have now is the first Jesuit to become Pope. So I looked into who the Jesuits are and they're members of the Society of Jesus and they're sometimes referred to as God's soldiers or God's Marines and they're led by a superior general which indicated to me that they're fighting a war. And since this is the first time a Jesuit or soldier pope has presided, and apparently he answers to a superior general of war, who currently is Adolfo Nicholas, I just thought it, it might be an indication, among other things, that their religious war is either complete or about to begin, or maybe even going into the final stages. Um, and the other thing I noticed is that our new Jesuit Pope is also the eighth king from the Lateran Treaty, which may tie in to this scripture about the eighth king. It says there are seven kings and the beast is the eighth. So the Lateran Treaty was signed in 1929 between Italy and the Catholic Church, and it established Vatican City as a sovereign state, which made the popes kings. So the first king pope was Pius XI, the second king pope was Pius XII, then John the Twenty-Third, Paul the Sixth, John Paul the First, John Paul the Second, Benedict the Sixteenth was then the seventh king, and then Francis is the eighth king. Um, and the pope is the king of very, very minimum, the 1.2 billion Roman Catholics that there are in the world. And then some would say he's also king of the Christians, of which there are 2 billion in the world. Because, among other things, this former Jesuit priest named Alberto Rivera claimed that his job was to train Jesuits on how to infiltrate U.S. Christian churches. And in fact, that has apparently been the goal for hundreds of years. So it shouldn't be surprising if they have accomplished this by now. Um, this is an excerpt from the Catholic Encyclopedia, Volume 7. And it says, Abe Zahorowski was a Jesuit who was expelled from his order. And in revenge for his expulsion, he wrote and published a book called Monita Sacrita to lay bare the shameless policy followed by the Jesuits. Um, so here it is on Wiki, the Monita Sacrita, and it says, according to the Monita, every means is to be employed of acquiring wealth for the order. Every means is to be used for their advancement and to discredit the members of other orders, while the world is to be persuaded that the society is animated by the purest motives and the reputation of those who quit is to be assailed and traduced in every way. So 
I found a translation of the Monita Sacrita here on library.org and I'm going to skim through this in the next video. So I'll leave a link below to part two of this.